Hi there, and uh, welcome to this video about using the debug library functions. Probably easiest before we get into the code to just show you an example of an app um, where we've used these. Um, this is the output for an app. I've got a GFX write statement that's printed this output here. It doesn't seem like much else is going on until I scroll over here a little bit and we go to the start debug output. And we can see we've got another little window over here where we've got some output where some things have been printed to the screen. So we've got our app window over here and we've got our debug window over here. Okay. So the idea with the debug window is it allows us to keep track of things like variable values while our program is running, so maybe at different points, what we call milestone logging. But it allows us to do that separately from the app window, which although at the moment um, with some of our early programs might not seem that important, but when we get into doing games with backgrounds and things like that, we don't really want to be trying to sort of see variable values um, you know, when we've got proper full size, full screen games and things going on. So this window is very useful for things like that. So let's actually have a look at the program itself or the app itself so we can sort of see how we did this. Okay, now it may look a little bit complicated, um, this app, when we first look at it, um, because we've got uh, three different new functions that we may not have seen before. But some of them, some of the things on here we have seen, we certainly understand this, where we've created a string variable, a local string variable. We've also come across GFX write before, so that, that was there just to show us um, that when we use that it always appears in the app window. We have set the value of our string variable here okay so on line 9 so the debug window and associated library function so it's set that there and then it writes it uses debug.write okay to write that message variable to the screen. Now debug.write is very similar to gfx.write meaning that it just writes to the screen but it writes on one line um, so it doesn't write on its own line, which allows us to then add with the next line, line 11, we're able to use debug.write to add on the same line are useful because uh, dot dot dot. Okay, then we reset our message variable to another value. Okay, then we use debug.newline, which is very similar to gfx newline, it basically moves to the new line in the output window. And then we've got debug.writeLine, line. So this time, this message value, the one that we've just recently set, okay, is going to be placed on its own line. And then finally, we use debug.write, okay, to add in a separate window from the app window. So we've used all three of the debug functions, okay, debug.write, debug.writeLine, line, and debug.newline. Very similar to the equivalent functions in GFX, so we don't sort of uh, get mixed up. Okay, and as we've just seen, when we actually run our program, okay, we press play to run it, and then we've got our option over here to start the debug output, and then that's where we're able to see what's going on with that. Okay, so that's using the debug functions, and as I said, we tend to use these as a means of keeping track of variable values during our program, what we call milestone logging. And we keep track of those in a separate window from our app window. So hopefully our app window can work as it is and our debug window appears like this. Now the only other thing to mention with this is that debug output is also shown in the Java console. Okay, if you have access to being able to look at your Java console. Okay. And and the debug output isn't shown when we run our apps on Android devices. Okay, so we only ever see the debug output if we choose to, when we run the app, the app here, if we actually click on uh, the, to, to start the debug output, and that's the only point where we actually see it. 